Oh, Ash is freaked out. <laughs> this isn't Luke. Yeah. yeah. It's, kind of, it's kind of weird that you're next to me today. Why? Because I'm not used to you being next to me. Yeah, right. I can go. Go <laughs> 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 Hey guys, welcome to the talk episode of the Coach's Corner. A little bit empty this week with Luke being away. Luke's away. I'm so sad. <laughs> no, we're not. I am sad. I miss him. Oh, oh please. I haven't seen him for three weeks. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, true. <laughs> I'm very sad. So uh, we'll answer your questions sent to our Instagram page, Squat Club AU, which is now on Lincoln's head. And uh, we're gonna dive straight into the questions today. I don't wanna measure my food. How would you suggest making changes to my diet that will help me get results? Well, so I think first of all, I would suggest to start cooking, if you're not. <laughs> Meal prepping. <laughs> Meal prepping, yeah. Um, try to have protein in every single meal. Yeah. If you don't wanna measure. <clears throat> also, um, that's your thing with a protein, fat, and carbs. Yeah. I've got a very small hand you wouldn't be full after that. <laughs> oh, bro, Ash's hand is That's better. That's for you. So. Palm size. <laughs> palm size. Yeah. Protein, fat, and carbs. And I would say try and add um, vegetables in with <clears throat> yeah. meals or fruit, but yeah. mainly vegetables. So if you aim to focus on protein and vegetables, and then you add your fats and carbs in with that yeah. as well, then that's a pretty good rule to stick yeah. by. And I think like go for, I mean it's self-explanatory, but go for like minimalized um, processed foods, you know, that holds high calories, especially if you're not going to measure and track, then I guess you've got to kind of be smarter with your choices that you're going to choose. So things like, you know, fruits and vegetables, um, things that hold lower calories um, and they're, they're micronutrient dense as well. So um, looking at foods like that and like these guys said too, is just, you know, focusing on, you know, eating a protein in every meal. Mm. Yeah. So, you tracking, Steve? You track? I'm not tracking, no, but this goes on to what I was going to say. Like, if you don't want to track, I guess the biggest thing is just building that routine in your habit. So, for most people, like, your day to day lives is pretty routine anyway. So, you can plan out when I can feed in meals and build a routine. And then every time you do go to eat, because I know people are like, oh, I don't know what to eat. Like, so, just a simple approach, just like ask yourself, where am I going to get my protein from? and then you'll get something in where we get my vegetables from, my fats from, and then before you know it, you've got a meal there. So you're not just guessing and you know, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like a lot more nutrient dense for you. So yeah. you slowly build routine over time and then you'll build that knowledge knowledge base and then, then you can start tracking if you want. Or, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, cool. myself, I don't track, so I just kind of, like I have tracked previously, so I've got that routine in now. I've kind of know roughly what numbers are. So yep. I just ask myself like, where am I getting my protein from, my, my vegetables and healthy fats from? And then, yep. And you've got a meal and it okay. roughly fits you know, my needs. So how about then if, if, you know, with the question being, um, if people wanting to get results but they don't want to measure their food, what about then if they were tracking and you know, they start getting results but things start slowing down, what would you guys do to, to try and continue the results if, you, if this was for you? I'd probably cut um, a bit of carbs, mm. maybe a bit of fats, depends how much yeah. the person is eating um, and see how they go with that. Yeah. Maybe add some extra cardio. Yeah, I'd pull, look at um, yeah, carbs or fats, but probably carbs. Yeah. And, um, and then I would say look at, you know, yeah, is your routine, like Steve was saying, is your routine down pat? Like are you eating protein, vegetables every meal? Have you let some bad habits, you know, come in? If so, then look at tightening those up, whether it's eating out or you know, little desserts here and there, or there's little things that might add up. I know, because like I've done it before as well. You know, I've um, there are times that I have not tracked, <laughs> believe it or not. But um, I would, um, you know, with me, like I'm a very routine person, so my food predominantly at the time will be the same every day. Um, so if I wanted to, um, I guess, obtain, you know. Or, reduce body fat, I would look at trying to remove something of a food that I would have every day, something that's small in terms of calories and just remove that and then continue eating how I have been throughout the week and then seeing how that goes for next week and then if it's starting to slow down over time then look at trying to remove something else or, or, or remove that and add something else that would be lowering calories. Yeah, I find always focus, trying to focus on 
focus on like adding more vegetables in because yeah. I know that can be a difficult one. So even if yeah. I just focus on adding in more vegetables, that generally leads to eating better overall. Yeah. Yeah. That makes a big difference. Yeah. So yeah. I just find just even focusing on that or fruit is another one. You just for your snacks. Yeah. yeah. I can just say, okay, for my snacks, I'm just going to have, you know, two to three pieces of fruit and then your vegetables and yeah, that's a good way. Yeah. Nice. And that'll help with um, cravings too a lot, I think. Yeah. Because I think a lot of the time when people do crave things, it's just because they're kind of like um, missing nutrients that they're not having. Yeah. So mm-hmm. if you ask yourself, like, where am I getting my vegetables and fruits from? That's a lot of nutrients that will you know, nourish you. It'll probably help a lot with like snacking later on, like unnecessarily. Yeah. yeah. And something I've been trying to do is um, like adding variety of fruit and vegetables instead of going for the same ones because it gets boring. It's like that star fruit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get a star fruit. <laughs> Don't try that. <laughs> Hot <But> tip. <laughs> try and, you know, use things like go for something that you wouldn't normally buy and then go, okay, how can I use this in my cooking? How can I add to it? And, you know, or try different fruits. So it's, you know, yeah, you're getting variety in, you're getting different colours in as well. So mm. it's not the same banana, apple, whatnot. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, some good answers. I hope that answered your question. Okay, next question. Do you recommend fasting cardio to help reduce body fat? For... I think I guess for most people it's probably not necessary. Like you could start off with the foundation, you know, like take care of your nutrition, get some movement in. Doesn't have like you know, like we said in previous episodes, find some activity that is fun for you that you know you can do like a lot you know, just on a sustainable uh, routine. So get that movement in, get your nutrition right, get your lifestyle right first um, to you know fast track like you're getting in shape. So. Like, fast cardio is probably a more advanced thing like later on, but get the foundation right first. I, think, I wouldn't yeah, cool. recommend it. I don't think it's necessary to do that. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend it either. The, like, there's insufficient studies showing that faster cardio would be more beneficial than fed cardio. So, the way that I would see it is that, I mean, it's everything comes down to personal preference when it comes to, um, I guess, with, with fitness. There's no black and white answer. So if you would prefer to, to do cardio on an empty stomach, then, then go for it. But if you would prefer to you know, do cardio with some energy in your system, then you know, do that, do what suits you. Um, but I mean, I, I, I look at it as if, if you have energy in your body, you're more likely to be able to increase your intensity of exercise that you're doing, which may look to increase the calories that you're burning as opposed to doing it faster um, so I'm not too sure if there's studies on that but that, that's my outtake but I know that there is studies showing that faster cardio is not beneficial or is not greater than um, fed cardio you know? so end of the day as well you've got to make that that calorie deficit you know for the day and then also over, over the week so just doing it in the morning it doesn't mean that you're going to burn body fat just because you haven't eaten, you know, it's it's all about you know, calories in, calories out, and energy balance um, over time, not just just for that that small portion of you doing cardio before you've eaten. Okay, um, uh, why is it important to eat protein? Protein. <laughs> ah. Why is it important? You need protein to um, for muscle recovery. Get those gains in. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, without protein, your muscle is not going to grow, um, and you're also not going to burn fat because you're not going to have any muscle. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, like if, if look, if you want that, if you want the shape, if you're looking to, you know, um, increase your strength or improve like body composition, um, the way that you feel, the way you look. Um, energy, things like that, like protein is going to be really important. It keeps you <coughs> satisfied as well. Yeah. So if you're basing your meal on it, it can help stabilize cravings so you're not having a sugar spike and wanting, you know, and if you're eating more, a lot of carbs, they're more energy dense and if you're not utilizing that energy, but if you're having more protein, it's going to build your lean muscle mass, which is essential for burning fat and increasing your lean muscle mass. Yep. And, um, it makes you fuller as yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah. So overall, you're going to feel like pretty good from eating it. Yeah. Mm. And yeah. Just Focusing on eating all the carbs or fats, you feel more satisfied. Yeah. So, yeah. Lean muscle mass is a big thing. I think. Yeah. Maybe a lot of girls don't see protein as as important, like mm. because they don't want. Oh, they think it's something for guys who 
training really hard, you want to get big muscles and everything, but it's just as important for girls because whatever training you do do, you're going to need protein to you know, get those results. So it's, you know, just eating protein is not going to make you massive. Or That's right. It, it is still necessary and for that lean muscle mass. And the stigma around having a protein shake because it's yeah. to gain muscle. Well, you don't have to have a protein shake, but it's if you're not getting enough protein through your diet, then it can be a good supplement. Yeah. Um, but just because you have it doesn't mean you're going to get even bulky. And, That's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, put on weight from it. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. Um, That's the thing, as well. Yeah, and I, I, I think as well, like um, majority majority of females, like they don't eat enough protein. Like we see it yeah. daily, all the time. So you yeah. know, I think if, you, if you're watching and you're wanting to know kind of what how much protein that you're intaking, you know, download My Fitness Power and and just to see how much protein that you're eating and track that, you know, because you probably be very surprised at how much protein that you're actually you're yeah. getting inside you. So. Um, and then from there looking to try and increase that and more likely most of the people like you probably want to double what you're having you, know? mm. you see it all the time people only having like 40 50 grams of protein a day yeah. you know so look at trying to like double that and so then if you're not you know if you're not getting in enough protein your energy sources are generally your carbs and fats yep. so then going back to that first question of you know, if you're not measuring your food if you're basing then your meals around protein your protein is going to be increased then generally carbs and fats would be decreased. So from a, if you're looking for a body composition um, result, then that's generally yeah. result in that. Mm. Yeah. Which is why we say like, ask yourself, where am I getting my protein from? Mm. Because you'll find sometimes, you know, if, when people do start to track what they're eating, you'll find one meal was just like, like an apple or something. And yeah. So there you go, if you add some protein to that, it balances a lot, uh, a lot more. I am quite often with females again, eating, Salads because they yeah. do, that's that's yeah. what's right as well. If you don't have any protein in it, mm. not really, because yeah. you're only eating carbs and fats. Yeah. 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 Make protein like we 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 prescribe with our clients as well. Like trying to make protein a priority for every meal and, and making that the first choice. Finding what type of protein source that you can have in each in a meal, and then use then your carbs and fats around that. You know, but making that a priority. Mm. You know. When it comes to definitely, when it comes down for for, like for fat loss, um, the main two priorities that we have are, are your calorie intake and your protein intake. You know, carbs and fats they do come down to personal preference. You know, but protein though everyone has a, a required amount depending on you know many factors. So, um, so look like trying to try and increase your protein intake. It will yeah. be very important. Yeah. And it's the, it won't be as much as you think either. Like for instance, in Lenka's case, you know. It's something with the size of your hand so it's gonna you know it doesn't have to be daunting or like mm. oh it's gonna don't think it's gonna be a mm. monstrous amount of protein it's yep. gonna suit you you know just something in that meal yep. or with a salad up. like say if you add, <coughs> add two tins of tuna instead of having one tin of tuna yeah. and that can bump it up so mm. do you do you have any like recommended like roughly of how much they should have for like you know as, a, as an average equation well, uh, two times of body weight what, gram. So, gram, in grams so if two grams per per kilo per kilo of your body yeah. weight yeah. Yeah. Yep. so if you weigh 60 kilos you should be eating 120 grams of protein per day yep yeah and what a piece of steak or we'll say chicken 100 grams of chicken is like 20 grams of protein in it yeah, like that yeah. yeah about that yeah so yeah Okay. And 100 grams of chicken isn't that much. No, no it's yeah. not. So yeah. like, yeah. Exactly. So yeah. you're trying to increase. That's definitely yeah. not satisfying for me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if I would have to eat. <laughs> <laughs> on my head. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So just to look at trying to increase the size of your protein intake as well, like the quantity yeah. Um, of, yeah, of for the meal. Okay, let's dive into the next one. Uh, I started training three months ago. Training three times a week, but my weight hasn't changed yet. Why is that? So, first of all, um, weight on the scale is not the best measurement. You should do um, measurements. No, girth measurements. Girth. Yeah. Girth measurements. <laughs> yeah. yeah, girth measurements. That, that's where... She's new here. <laughs> this isn't her spot. <laughs> yeah. What did you say? I beeped that one out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's YouTube, it's alright. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so 
especially if you are new into training, you're probably going to put on weight or the weight on the scale is going to stay the same because you're going to build muscle and muscle weights more than fat. Um, but if you do good measurements, that's where you should see a difference. Um, another question you should probably ask yourself is if you change your diet, because training is not everything. Well, if you think of it, if you do, what, three sessions a week, is it three sessions? Yeah. That's three hours a week out of your whole week. So it's not going to equate to much over the week if yeah. you are looking for results. So what matters is what you do outside of the gym. And yeah, definitely. And then also take, like, take into consideration as well that you know, if, if this person is, or if anyone out there is newer into strength training, you know, they have the advantage of having the newbie gains. <coughs> So they'll be able to you know, build muscle a lot faster than someone that was more advanced. Sorry, man flu. Um, <laughs> oh, now I'm going to cough. <coughs> so, you know, and, and if, look, if you're increasing your lean muscle mass. <laughs> you know what I need to see? <laughs> if you're increasing your lean muscle mass, then like, you know, your weight. <laughs> But like, if you're increasing your lean muscle mass, then your weight will start to increase as well. You know, so like that's right. Like, like I said, like don't look at the weight on the scale as the dictator of your progress. You know, look at other factors, um, and then also then think: Have I like have I done everything in my power to if it's if I, to, 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 they haven't seen any changes yet? Have I done everything in my power to to see changes? Like. Have I, have I given a 100% commitment, you know? And then you be true to yourself and honest to yourself and to see if, if, like, if you really have. And if you haven't, then find out, like, what, what things that you, you need to, to work on, you know, and, and try and improve that, so. Um, but there are, there are many factors as to, like, for, for that answer. You know? I think definitely, like, with that, it's, I think most people, um, it's not an intentional thing. Either they think that they're eating well, but it could just be the quantity size too. Mm. So that's where recording or just tracking um, and just writing it down will give you a really good feedback and you go, oh, okay, you know, things that you might not have realized could be stopping you from getting results. Um, so, that's yeah, it. Tracking. Well, what gets tracked gets measured. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 exactly. And There's no guessing in it. That's <laughs> right, yeah. And it, like, you know, tracking be for everyone and we don't prescribe it for everyone but it is the most optimal way to lose body fat um, so if you know if you really you know wanting to make a change um, and you're ready to to make that commitment then like look at trying to track your intake as well you know? I think the thing that, that comes back to it though is you can do it for a time period and why I would recommend everyone to do it anyway yep. if they do want to get results is what Steve was saying is to be able to set that routine so now he's educated around what he needs and he knows how to build his meals and he's got himself into that routine and just comes as what he does. Yeah. Um, and so I think the education side of it to understand what's a protein, what's a carb, what's a fat, your, pro your quantity sizes, and then you go from there, you go, okay, I've got an idea, you can go. So you go out and you pick a meal and you go, oh, I know what's in that. And you can measure yourself inside your head yes. down the track. Yeah. So it gives you that education for long term. A lot more independence as yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it goes back to what we were talking about on uh, last episode about. Uh, or the one before that was about meal plans and macros, you know, like while, you know, f f starting out, someone can start off on a meal plan to kind of get some sort of routine, but it would be great to then move them along to trying to educate them about how nutrition works, how protein, fat, carbohydrates, calories work, how adjusting things and, and removing foods and implementing something else in and finding that balance because then you become a lot more independent and you can then you know, go out like Steve does and goes out for dinner when am I going to get that invite? <laughs> <laughs> but like, you can go out for, for dinner and, and you can start to understand, you know, and, and see what, you know, in terms of the caloric intake and see what, what is on your plate, you know, and then you can make adjustments later on and remove things based on, you know, the meal and it's all about balance. And that's important for, um, like, emotional relationships with food as well. You know, so it's not restrictive. If it's too restrictive, then you're going to crave. So if it's meal plan, you know you can't have this or this. It's very black and white. Yeah. If you um, have that little bit of flexibility in there, it's like, okay, it's not so bad. And you don't yeah. have that bad relationship or eating disorders that can come from you know, being really restrictive with your diet. Yeah, that's very important thing, building that relationship with food. Yeah. Because like, when this is our health we're talking about. It's not just mm. some short-term goal that, you know, we've got to do this yeah. for our lives. So, yeah. yeah, it's our health. So, yeah, you got to build up that 
that knowledge base, that understanding and that healthy relationship towards it. Yeah. You don't look at it as some kind of task or chore or having yeah. cheat meals like we said previously, you know, it's yeah. part of our lifestyle. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, well that vicious cycle of, oh, yeah. I'm eating really bad and now I've got to you know, make yeah. up for it or whatnot. Yeah, it's like, that's, that's okay. not sustainable. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm. So, <laughs> what? Good job, Ab. All right, so uh, I want to start to strengthen up my core. So, what exercises do you suggest? So, what are you guys prescribing right now for your clients? I first compound exercises. Yes. Should we should we explain like the importance of of trying to strengthen up our core as well in terms of like what we do here? I think breathing is important too. It's a foundation yeah. for your core, but you're going to explain. Yeah. Well, like I mean, so we, I mean, for us here, we implement a lot of um, core strengthening exercises, um, which will help the big compound lifts. And for us, the compound lifts are if you were to build a house and you have your slab and you, you build up your frame, you know, that's for, in terms of training, that's what the compound lifts are like as well. Um, so, if you have a strength, a stronger core, you're going to be able to maintain. You know, a, a lot better with your posture, um, your form, and we can be able to progress um, in, in a timely manner. So um, it's really, really important to strengthen up your core um, for all lifts, not just the compounds, but um, the stronger your core is. I always say, you know, a tighter body is a stronger body. So, you know, and a lot of my clients, I, I say that like I'm like a broken record when I say that, and they've all heard it. But it, it, it's so true, you know, so it's very important to strengthen up your core and um, it will help with, with all of your leaves. Like, if, I don't think there's one where, you know, you don't really have to not brace your core on the top of my head. I think it's, it's but, a link. By that, I think if you are bracing properly, that's when you're starting to strengthen your mm. core. Because the first two years when I was training with you, I've never done any um, core exercise other than actual... Bracing. Yeah, bracing, and I, I think my core was strongly there already. Um, I only recently started just because I do powerlifting and I obviously want to lift more weights, so my core needs to be strong. But before, I've never done any core exercise and my core was strong just because I was bracing well. So I, that's the most important thing when you're starting um, strength training. Bracing and breathing, yeah. like you were saying. Yeah. Well, I think because you know it's the link between your thoracic and your pelvis, so it's creating that stability around your spine in that area. We want to limit that the movement. We'll have correct movement when we're doing our big lifts, um, but with the bracing, I think it's important to know that bracing is not about sucking in. It's about creating that breathing and having that deep diaphragmatic breathing into the core and bracing. Yeah. Um, which is hard to and also yeah. by saying that, a lot of people think that the core is only your abs. Yeah. And it's not. Core is everything around. Um, like a belt. Which your pelvic like floor, it's yeah. your diaphragm, it's your TA. So yeah. it's like, I always say it's like your own corset of your body. So if you were to think of a female corset that wraps around, and that's your TA, and then your diaphragm and your pelvic floor. So it creates that cavity between your thoracic and your pelvis that you want to keep really tight and stable to support your spine through your compound lifts. So, Breathing is important because then if you're doing deep breathing, then you're working your TA and then you take your big breaths to brace your core when or your, your stomach while you're lifting. So, mm. yeah. I think like most things, like most topics that we will go through, um, it's getting that understanding rather than, okay, what, what exercise do I do? Uh, yeah. Understand mm. what you're actually doing and then you can you know, strengthen it yourself. So, like, so if we do the lifts properly, then we will be strengthening our core. Like, mm. So just like what um, I was saying, like, doing our breathing properly, so I think a lot of people will just, they take a deep breath, they'll breathe like into their lungs, whereas yeah. we want to try and promote like di uh, diaphragmatic breathing where you kind of big exhale, align align the rib cage and the pelvis, and then fill, fill your belly up with air first and create that, it's kind of like a piston in there. And, then and that's your brace. Yeah, that's yeah. your brace. If that's strong, then that connection between um, your rib cage and your pelvis and everything, that's strong and then you know, you're going to be stable. Because yeah. you don't want anything unstable between your rib cage and your pelvis. Mm. It's your back there too. So yeah. Yeah, create, have, having an understanding, and when you understand it, you perform your lifts properly. You you will get strong that way because you're yeah. using it. You know. So. And I think so. Say if you're doing a plank, it's important to make sure that you are 
um, using your glutes and keeping your ribs down yeah. and keeping your, your stomach braced because you can easily take over with other muscles and not actually use your core. So it might mean that you peel it back to doing 10 seconds, like 10, 10 seconds on, 5 seconds off. But in that 10 seconds, it's quite intense that you're actually activating your core compared to holding it for, say, 30 seconds or a minute and you're actually using every other muscle except your core. So I think you know, yeah, that. that's exactly like going back to you first need to learn how to breathe properly and brace properly because if you don't do that correctly then no matter what exercise you do you're not going to use the right muscles especially with playing as you're saying you see so many people doing it wrong that they really using your day back more than anything else yeah um yeah then there is no point of doing it yeah really. nice work guys cool see we don't need luke <laughs> yes we do but you can yes, stay right do. here I miss you. <laughs> so that's all the questions for today's episode. If you have questions, then make sure you suit them to our Instagram page, Squat Club AU, and then we will see you in the next episode. See you next week. Bye. Bye.